2 News at 4 begins now. Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you so much for being here with us for Crime 2 News First at 4. I'm Whitney Ward broadcasting, of course, still at home. Mark Hanrahan is there at the Crime 2 studios. And Mark, we begin tonight as Spokane County is reporting 23 new coronavirus cases today, 100 in the last week. Yeah, it's a big number, Whitney. We'll get to more of that in just a moment. We want to first, though, go to some breaking news tonight. We have learned that one person died after a shooting in Grant County. Just in the last hour, the sheriff's office released this photo of the suspect. Now they're asking for surveillance footage of the la from last night's shooting. Deputies believe he is connected to two shootings in the Larson community. They see they say he was wearing a red flannel, black beanie with white jeans and carrying a handgun. Again, that's a photo of who they believe the suspect is. Yesterday there was a shooting in the early afternoon. The neighborhood known as the base was on a brief lockdown. The victim was transported to a Spokane hospital where deputies say he later died from his injury. So if you have any video footage that you can submit to the Grant County Sheriff's Office, they would certainly like to see it. Now back to our top story tonight. The Health District reporting 23 new cases of the coronavirus today, and that makes more than 100 cases in Spokane in the last week. Today, Dr. Bob Lutz addressed the spike, saying a couple of things are to blame here, and he got choked up a few times when discussing the toll that COVID-19 is taking all across the nation. It's a reminder. It's a reminder that sometime today, uh, we will see more than 100,000 people in the United States die of COVID-19. Using the front page of the New York Times as a backdrop, uh. Dr. Bob Lutz was noticeably shaken as he addressed the growing death toll from COVID-19. This is really uh, a reflection um, on the glaring inequalities that exist across our nation that has disproportionately affected people of color, Hispanics, immigrants, elderly, and people with medical issues. Every life had a story and every life mattered. Dr. Lutz also addressed the recent spike in cases in Spokane, more than 100 new cases in less than a week. Lutz said two things are at play here. More widespread testing has resulted in more cases. And the outbreak at the Philadelphia Macaroni Company, where 35 employees and 15 of their family members have now tested positive. And in that case, Lutz said many of the employees didn't have symptoms. But in this particular outbreak, and we were sort of crunching the data yesterday, Almost 50% of individuals were asymptomatic. On Friday, Spokane County moved into phase two of reopening. Lutz worries if people don't keep their guard up, we'll continue to see the virus spread. I do have some concerns that given maybe some over exuberance this past weekend, that I may be seeing numbers similar in the next week to two weeks. It's why he says social distancing and wearing a mask while in public is so important right now to protect our friends, family and workers serving us during the pandemic. This is what public health is all about. Ensuring opportunities for everyone to stay healthy. Thanks. Looking at the number of coronavirus cases statewide now, eight new deaths and 116 new cases were reported in Washington. The state has reached more than 20,000 overall cases. That's according to the Washington State Health Department. So far, 6.1% of tests given have come back positive for COVID-19. Religious services can resume in Washington. Governor Jay Inslee just made that announcement, but a few restrictions are in place for houses of worship. Our Regina on joins us live in the newsroom tonight with an update from the governor. Regina. Well, Mark, this comes after President Trump called on governors to open churches and places of worship on Friday. If you can recall, Governor Inslee now saying he's easing some restrictions for religious gatherings and for counties in phase one, churches can offer outdoor religious services with up to 100 people. Social distancing and face coverings are required. Now in phase two, indoor religious services can be held at 25% capacity or with fewer than 50 people. In-home services or counseling will be allowed with no more than five people and everyone must be wearing a face mask. Governor Inslee is also asking places of worship to voluntarily keep a log of service attendees to help with contact tracing. He says everyone should be responsible when going to places of worship. The facilities in, in, uh, in our faith communities can be very uh, ripe for transmission. We saw dozens of people in a one choir practice in Skagit County in part because we know that 
Singing is a very uh, you know, vibrant activity that moves that virus around where people are close to one another for uh, sometimes an hour or more. And Governor Inslee says these guidelines for worship services will apply to all religious ceremonies like weddings and funerals. And the governor also adding he'll be making additional announcements this week on face coverings by the end of this week. Live in the newsroom tonight, Regina on back to you, Mark. Regina, thank you very much. Today, the state secretary of health approved three more counties to move into phase two of reopening. That brings the total to 24 counties that have now been approved to move to phase two. Kittitas, Thurston and Walla Walla counties now able to move on to the next phase of Governor Inslee's safe start plan. The application from Clark County currently on pause right now due to the outbreak investigation there. As detectives try to solve the case of two missing Idaho children, their mother's friend is now breaking her silence. JJ Vallow and Tylee Ryan have been missing now for eight months. Today is supposed to be JJ's eighth birthday. To honor that, a vigil was held Monday with relatives and community members. Now someone else is stepping in to share more details about the mother, Lori Vallow. Her name is Melanie Gibb, and she's a close friend of Lori's. And when asked about how she felt about Lori's relationship with her now husband, Chad Daybell, when she was married to Charles Vallow, this is what she said. I did actually offer the idea. I'm like, why don't you just go ahead and get a divorce? And they were told that they weren't allowed to. Something that they received from through the other side of the veil, how they, how they would speak about it. Well, this is Gibbs' first time speaking publicly about the case. She told East Idaho News that she's been in hiding since December when police announced that JJ and Tylee were missing. more and more popular according to local experts, but it could be more and more dangerous too. This time of year, many are heading outside looking for edible mushrooms. In North Idaho, the morels are particularly popular this time of year, but you got to remember that not all mushrooms are edible. As Creme 2's Taylor Vito reports tonight, a local club is reporting that a North Idaho man was recently hospitalized because he ate the wrong kind. So it's a pretty serious group of mushrooms, and we do have several species growing in North Idaho. Some wild mushrooms are A-OK -okay for you to pick and hunt. This is video of us last year searching for wild morels, a popular mushroom that appears this time of year. But other kinds of fungus, not so much. The North Idaho Mushroom Club says they received reports within the last week of a local man who may have eaten one of these mushrooms and was hospitalized. Uh, he may have been experiencing uh, hallucinations. The group is assuming the man is okay and thinks he was hunting for mushrooms in either the Coeur d'Alene or Sandpoint area. The club says their information is based on reports from members. However, both the Panhandle Health District and Kootenai Health told Krim they didn't have any information on local poisonings. But and still, North enjoy. Idaho Mushroom Club oh, educator Tim Gerlitz says the kind of mushrooms that can make you very sick are definitely out there in the Panhandle. So it's not unusual to run across these mushrooms while you're hunting for your favorite edible. And the difference can be hard to spot. See these two mushrooms? Gerlitz says the kind on the left is edible, but the one on the right is poisonous. And to an untrained eye, that can be hard to spot. The North Idaho Mushroom Club looks to combat that, and they add that mushroom hunting in North Idaho is becoming more popular. But with this kind of uh, surge of interest, we have a lot of people going out into the forests who have minimal information and knowledge about mushrooms. As more people move to the area and amidst COVID-19, it's not surprising that some people may be looking for a new outdoors hobby. Gerlitz says the North Idaho morel season has been great and recent wet weather has helped. But when hitting your favorite mushroom spot, please do your research and be informed. What that tells us is mushrooms are taking off. It's we're, we're kind of joining the rest of the countries on the planet Earth and being really interested in this hobby. Gerlitz says having a field guide with you regarding mushrooms is helpful. Don't eat a mushroom until you know it's safe. And you're encouraged to also contact the North Idaho Mushroom Club for information on Facebook. They're there to help. Taylor Vito, Cram 2 News. 
Well, good information for sure, just so you can be a little extra careful. All right, let's switch gears now and talk about weather. Tom Sherry, there you are in wow. the studio. I miss you. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. I hope you're loving it. Um, it's a beautiful day, though, to be outside, isn't it? Absolutely, and I am missing you as well. <laughs> uh, we're all properly social distancing uh, back here at the station. But again, my as you just noted, my first day back, and it's great to be back in the studio again. Uh, lots of precautions being taken behind the scenes. So I want to thank uh, managers and everybody who's just making sure we all stay safe. Boy, they couldn't do a better job of that. Uh, let's talk about this. You were saying it was a beautiful day outside. You nailed it. 72 degrees right now. The winds are calm as you can see. Beautiful shot of Lake Coeur d'Alene there. Lots of folks going to be out doing some boating, but be careful. The water is still extremely cold. I mean, consider that just a couple of days ago it was just melted snow. Uh, you look at the satellite and radar picture. High pressure now across the Pacific Northwest. We'll look for a very pleasant evening. We'll go from 70s to 60s and then 50 will be the overnight low. 82 the expected high tomorrow well above the average high this time of year of 69 and this is not a misprint we could hit 90 degrees on saturday but we're going to get increasing clouds thunderstorms are going to develop late saturday night into sunday as a cool front drops in we'll drop our temperature by 20 degrees sunday looks like it's going to be cloudy breezy with rain showers and thunderstorms at times i'll have a look at your seven day forecast coming right up Sounds pretty good, Tom. Thank you very much. And what was supposed to be another memorable moment in American space history is actually going to have to be on hold for now. The SpaceX Falcon 9 rocket was canceled today because of poor weather. So if you take a look today, that rocket was set to launch at the Kennedy Space Center. The video was incredible either way. It would have been the first time a private company launched astronauts into orbit. The U.S. hasn't launched its own astronauts into space since the space shuttle program ended in 2011. NASA astronaut and Spokane native Ann McLean talked with Krem earlier today and says it's definitely a lot of emotion. I feel like we kind of had this, uh, this, this little secret or, or kind of um, in the astronaut office that now the whole world is getting to see. And that's that this, this launch today is not just a singular occurrence. It is not just one more launch. It is beginning a season of test flights, and it really is a new era in space flight. Pretty exciting stuff. As for Anne McLean's next opportunity to get back into space, she says nothing is set in stone right now, but she does plan and hope to return there again one day. And a NASA spokesperson says the next liftoff for SpaceX is scheduled this Saturday. All right, before we head to a quick break, we want to give another shout out to our seniors here in this area. So a big shout out right now to Eva Meredith. She's a senior at Mead High School. She's planning on attending Spokane Falls Community College in the fall, and she hopes to pursue a career in photography. How cool is that? We love giving these shout outs to all these great seniors, so please keep them coming. Text 2020 to 509 448 and we'll make sure to send you the link on how to submit your senior for some recognition right here on Creme 2. We'll be right back.